Hello friends, in this video I'll be remaking the end of time from Chrono Trigger in HD2D. HD2D is an art style that has been made popular by Square Enix with the release of Octopath Traveler. It takes 2D pixel sprites and tiles and places them in a 3D environment, complete with lighting, reflections, and bloom. And it's not just Octopath that has this style. Live Alive, Ayudan Chronicle, Star Ocean R, and even the upcoming remakes of Dragon Quest all use this modern take on classic pixel art. As a fan of classic JRPGs myself, I thought it would be an interesting challenge to try to replicate this popular style in Godot, and apply it to one of the greatest JRPGs ever made, Chrono Trigger. What other games do you think need the HD2D treatment? Let me know in the comments below. If you want the full source code and other perks, you can also join my Patreon linked below. To start off, I gathered the sprites for the main character Chrono, and put together a quick animation tree and animation player, and attached it to a sprite 3D. If you'd like to see how to set something like this up, I have a video on setting up animations. Next, I attached a quick character control script, and now Chrono can move around in full 3D glory. To start building out the environment, we'll first need to take a look at the layout of the end of time. The level is comprised of three main platforms. The main part is the lamp post area, where we can find the Guru of Time sitting under a lamp post, as well as a few decorative pieces. Second area is where we can find the wormholes in the form of light pillars. The final section is a separate room where we can find Specchio, who teaches the party how to use magic. It's a fairly simple scene, but the trickiest part is replicating the background. It is a solid image that is scrolling down and to the left at a consistent pace, and every row of pixels is being offset with a sine wave. Taking the image, I first attached it to the canvas layer behind the level. Using some simple shader code, I can get each row to move in a similar way to how the game originally had it. In order to model the scene, I'm going to take the tiles and model the level using Crocotile, a tile-based 3D modeling tool that is perfect for this job. And being a 2D tile-based game, remaking the scene using the existing tiles should be easy. Except, the end of time is drawn in this weird isometric angle. In order to make this work, I'll need to remake many of these tiles so that they aren't angled. But thankfully, the tiles that make the platforms comprise of these repeated stone tiles, as well as this round cobblestone pattern, which look fine as is. The platform, if you notice, is also an inverted pyramid, where the sides are this red gradient texture. Both pyramids are the exact same size, but have a different pattern for the floor. So I'll model one platform, but also make two separate textures that can be swapped out. The fence is also skewed, but it is a fairly simple tile to remake. I don't need to do anything fancy for this, it's just a plane with alphas. Next I'll model the bucket of water, and then add flowers to the bucket. The lamp is a little bit trickier. It wouldn't make sense to leave this flat, and in order to make this look proper, I need to model it out. And even though I'm not a trained 3D artist, the shape is simple enough to model in Crocotile directly. Putting all this together in Godot, I'll need to add normals to the materials, so the lighting looks a bit more detailed. I then added the light to the lamp, and threw in some code to make it flicker. Connecting the platforms is this gate. It comprises of two wood posts, and the wooden gate with what I'll assume is a ring handle. The sides of this bridge also has this stone brick texture, which I can't really use at this angle, so I'll take the same colors and make my own. I can also use this new tile for the bridge area, where the player can jump down to the epoch. When the player touches the gate, it should open, but in the original it's only two frames, open or close. 
I think it'll look a lot better if the gate swings. Using a bit of code, I got this working with a bounce tween. The final area has an arched doorway that leads to Specchio's room. Again, the door tile is way too skewed for me to use, so I'll have to remake this as well. To have the illusion of zoning to another room, I group the two sections to toggle which is or isn't visible. The door is a third section that is always visible. When you enter the room, it fades to black, toggles what is and isn't visible, then fades in again. Now we can run around the room and learn magic. Lastly, I added the light pillars. And this is the final result. It was a fairly simple scene to put together, and I think the results look great. Square Enix, if you're watching this, we need a Chrono Trigger remaster. You can try out the project in my itch linked below. What other scenes do you want to see remade in this style? Are there other game mechanics you'd like to see me replicate? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video.